morning, good evening, good night, wherever you are in the world, and welcome back to another episode of From the Field to the Track. As always, I am joined by my lovely co-host, and by my lovely co-host and best friend, Katie. Katie, how are you today? I'm good. How are you, T? I'm great, thank you. It is obviously another race week. We have finally entered race week after three long weeks of summer break. Um, I'm very excited. And yeah, so first off, let's get into the honourable NRL mentions of this week. And first off, it has to go to none other than the Manly Seagulls players for turning up to Wollongong on their day off. On their, like They weren't even playing and they turned up to the game to watch Kieran Foran play his 300th game. Obviously, he's played a vast majority of his 300 games for Manly. So that was a really cool thing for the Manly players to do. Um, come out on their day off and essentially support him. And that was quite cool. Um, and then another another um, honourable NRL mention of the week has to go to the Tigers, the West Tigers, because they have finally won another game. And look, I tip the Tigers every single week because I just have a slight bit of hope that they will win, even though they are sitting dead last. Um, but I like feel bad for them because they are coming dead last and I just want them to win and want them to do well. So when... I was going, I think I was going to the game on Thursday with my uncle and I was like, oh, I tipped the Tigers. And he was like, oh, did you hear like Buller's out for the entire season? I was like, oh yeah, but like maybe I should change it. And then he was like, yeah, you definitely should. And then I forgot what I was doing. Every time I opened like the tipping app, I was like, um, I don't know what I'm doing. And then I never changed it. It was a stick with the Tigers and the Tigers won. So um, it was a good day for me, even though I'm sitting Made like- some money. Even, no, no, no. I'm sitting second, I'm sitting second last in my tipping competition. So no money for mm-hmm. Tiana. Um, but yeah, so t- thank you to the Tigers for somewhat saving my tips and being the only, I would have actually gotten a perfect week if the Panthers didn't lose. So I'm going to blame the Panthers for that one. But um, yeah, so if the Tigers, so I would have had a perfect week, which makes me really sad. But nevertheless, Katie, what are we talking about on today's episode of From the Field to the Track? Well, as Tiana said, we are back racing this week, so we thought we'd have a little chat about that, maybe a little bit of chat of what else has happened over the summer break. There's always a lot of news in summer break, and the rumour mill, when they're not racing on the track, the rumour mill has time to just really get ahead of itself. So, um, yeah. Yep, so we'll start off with the story of the week, kind of heading into the um, Belgian, not the Belgian Grand Prix, the Dutch Grand Prix. Um, And obviously that is a big story or a big news line coming out of the last week and kind of the beginning of um, this race week is the fact that Daniel Ricciardo has been told that he needs to retire by a certain um Dutch analyst so obviously there's been a lot of rumors going around with Daniel Ricciardo and his seat at VCarb obviously with Helmut Marko kind of stating at the beginning or at the midpoint of this season that VCarb and the sponsors and everyone had made it very clear to him that VCarb is a junior team and always has been and always will be a junior team so Daniel Ricciardo therefore serves no purpose at that team um and there's been a lot of talk about that and obviously with Sergio Perez resigning it kind of seemingly leaves Daniel Ricciardo without a seat for 2025 if everything goes according to the the way that silly season we think the silly season will play out and that is that um Liam Lawson will get that uh, VCarb seat and there has been a Dutch an- analyst by the name of Tom Cornell Corne- Co- Cornell who essentially has urged Daniel Ricciardo to be honest with himself and accept the fact that he has no business of being at Red Bull at the Red Bull junior team of VCarb um so Katie obviously you are a huge Daniel Ricciardo fan as we all are but you know none bigger than you so let's see your kind of I want to know your thoughts and opinions on this entire topic. Uh, why are we telling people when they can and can't retire? Yeah, that's a strange thing to do. Let's not be doing that, I guess. Um, here's my thing. Love him, obviously. I mean, it goes without saying. Um, but I think we do have to realize when people's kind of time has come up. I do think he could has another couple years in him, but I mean, it's just the nature of the talent that's on the track at the moment. It's pretty. It's pretty decent um and I'm not saying he's not one of the top like 20 kind of options but um yeah in terms of the rebel seat he's probably not the the fourth you know what I mean Mm -hmm. um yeah contenders for the for the rebel seat I probably wouldn't put him at fourth yeah um the only thing that gets me through is it would break my heart like when Daniel left McLaren I was so upset um really really upset um, the only thing that would heal my broken heart would be if Liam Lawson got that seat. Um, so I will be incredibly upset if um, Daniel retires or leaves the sport and Liam doesn't get the seat. But, um, yeah, either way, you just got to run with the punches, I guess, you know. 
Mm-hmm. There's been all, obviously the news about Paul Sergio Perez's contract never stops for him. Um, poor guy. <laughs> but at the end of the day, there has obviously been the rumors that Sergio Perez won't keep that seat in 2025, and it still hasn't been confirmed for 2025. I'm pretty sure it was only confirmed for the rest of the season, so that's still up for grabs. I think if anything, if I see Daniel Ricciardo going anywhere, it's potentially to that seat. Um, even though Yuki Tsunoda, in my opinion, kind of deserves that seat over Daniel Ricciardo but that's each to their own um I just think Daniel Ricciardo I, I love Daniel Ricciardo and I feel like he has had a great career and has had some standout moments and as an Australian um and as someone who really loves Daniel Ricciardo like I'll be sad to see him go however I think um like Katie said the talent in Formula One is just getting younger and younger and we're seeing literally next season we have the potential of four rookies being on the F1 grid and four rookies under 25 being on the grid with yeah. pretty much, I think it's like five drivers under 25 will be, that's like fourth of the grid being under 25 years old, which mm-hmm. is crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, And I, I don't know. I think Daniel Ricciardo, unfortunately, may have just gotten, I think he's gotten the, sh- the short end of a very long stick here. And I hope that, he, you know what, I do say that if there's one person who is okay to retire from the sport and like still be in and around Formula One, it's Daniel Ricciardo. He's got that media personality. He's got that personality where he can go onto Sky Sports and be a presenter or be like an expert analysis, like a Jensen Button or like um, an Eco Rosberg. Um, so if there's any driver that's going to do it, it's going to be Daniel Ricciardo. And so I don't think we're not going to see much of Daniel Ricciardo if he retires. I think he'll still be out and about and just be around that F1 paddock or around motorsports in general. But nevertheless, time will tell. And hopefully we get some contract announcements for VCarb and Mercedes and Stake pretty soon because they're the last four seats in the grid. And pretty much Alpine's been already confirmed. So we're just waiting for the official announcement to come out. Um, but yeah, so... Thought. What are our general thoughts? Obviously, the first race weekend after a summer break. What are your general thoughts going into the Zen Vought weekend? I'm just so I'm so happy that they just recharged their batteries and they're back. Mm-hmm. They always say that. Always. Oh, mm-hmm. so good to recharge my batteries. <laughs> are you a robot? Us, like, are you? Are yeah. You a robot? I I saw like so many people like criticize them and are like, oh, we don't get a break. Like, we don't get a summer break. We don't get three weeks off from us. But I was like, oh, God. Um, uh, yeah, I guess their lives aren't really that hard. Um, uh, <laughs> that's professional sports players for you. Anyway, <laughs> sorry, besides that, very really excited. Um, personally, I'm just about to go into a lecture break. So I will have the time, even though I will still have a full-time job, um, <laughs> Um, I will be have some time to time to recharge my batteries in front of some F one this weekend, so that'll be good. Yeah, that's always good, and I think like as you said, Zandvoort is the first race. I think it's the first race, and then we have Monza directly after. Then we have a one. We have like four races, or we have like four races. I think it's Singapore is the next one, and then we go on a month break. Yeah, there's a whole like month. That's longer than the summer break. There's a whole month break from like I can't even remember, but two of the American races, and I'm like, damn. Oh. Like, oh, Baku. It's from Baku all the way to, like, um, the American races, the whole month break. I'm like, okay. Like, I reckon my fa- my favourite races are in this half of the season. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's fair enough. I, I – my favourite race – I think I think majority of my favourite races are in this half of the season. I think it's actually mm-hmm. spread out. but Like, I America. I love America. Mm-hmm. The races over there, Coda. I love Coda. Love Singapore. Yeah. Obviously love Monza. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just a just an iconic bunch of tracks, really. Um, yeah. I just I'm really excited going into this weekend. Obviously, Zunvort has been labeled one of the harder tracks in the F1 calendar. Obviously, because of the banking and the tight corners, um, it's just a traditional. It's just a traditional track. However, because of the tight nature of the track, it kind of emulates that of um, a street circuit in the ways because it's quite tr- tricky and everything like that. Obviously, like I said, very steep corners because you have the banking and everything like that. Um, but like Zandvoort has always been a track or rather in a couple of past couple of years with these new F1 cars has been known as a track where like overtaking is seemingly impossible or hard to do and I feel like with everything that we have seen in the past kind of months or kind of rounds in F1 I feel like it's not going to be as impossible or rather um, it won't be as hard because of the way that these cars are kind of following each other and the way that we're seeing so many overtakes being done and so many changes for the lead and so many just things happening, so many battles throughout the pack, um, whether that be for P1 or P10 or P20. Like, there are battles happening every single 
everywhere you look, it's so hard to take your eyes off the screen at F1 at the moment, which is something crazy when you think about how F1 in 2022 and 2023 and even the start of until pretty much Miami and like that's what F1 was kind of the norm of, which I think is absolutely insane. But let's talk about some of our contenders for this weekend. But before we talk about that, let's get into some of the upgrades because it is, once again, if, if you if you didn't hear or if you didn't know, it is the first race after the summer break. Um, so a lot of teams are bringing upgrades to Zandvoort. Rather, the main two teams are Mercedes and Ferrari. So essentially, during the Belgian Grand Prix, Mercedes did bring an upgrade package to Spa. However, during Friday quality or Friday practice, sorry, they didn't look as strong or as promising. And because... Um, their head engineer at the track, their head track side engineer, essentially he said that um, Spa and Silverstone are quite similar to tracks in the way of like the corners and everything like that. So they just reverted the car from the new setup that they had to um, the Silverstone like pa- package that they had, all right, the, the setup they had in Silverstone. And obviously that worked very well for them, obviously finishing P1 and 2 on the roads before George Russell gets disqualified, but it was still a race win for them. Um, like they had rate their trackside engineer Andrew Shovlin Shovlin I feel like I'm saying his name completely wrong but sorry um he essentially said that they removed everything from the car and it wasn't because the upgrades were underperforming in a way it just they believed that the upgrades didn't suit the track that they were doing so they're going to try it again this weekend in Zandvoort because they they are very actually hopeful that um it will work so essentially the upgrades are revised under floor and a modified diffuser. So I don't know what any of that means, but I know that someone out there will. And um, I know that it's going to be very exciting. And Mercedes obviously think that this will do wonders for their car um, and hopefully bring them closer to that fight with Red Bull and McLaren or rather be there more consistently and not just when lucky things happen for them or strategy works out for them. And then Ferrari. Ferrari were bringing a massive upgrade package in hopes of getting closer to that top three. Obviously, they've kind of drifted. Obviously, they're still sitting P3 in the Constructors' Championship. However, they've kind of, like, drifted out. Because when you think about key contenders for race weekends, when you go, in, I don't know about you, Katie, but when we go into a race weekend, my mind immediately goes to um, Max Verstappen, Lando Norris, Oscar Piastri, Lewis Hamilton, George Russell but it never goes to a Charles Leclerc or a Carlos Sainz. So mm-hmm. I think this upgrade package will genuinely help them going into this race weekend. Hopefully it does. Obviously, we need to see some good upgrades from Ferrari. But what are your thoughts on the new upgrades for both Mercedes and Ferrari? Nah, looks looks good. Hopeful, I'm hoping that Ferraris give them a little bit of a leg up this weekend. Someone always comes out of the gates kicking after the summer break. Who do you pick out of the two who have bought significant upgrades? Who do you think's going to make the comeback? Or do you think there's poss- possibility for Red Bull to have gone away and, and put the work in to have Max come out and regain his dominance? Oh, I see, like, I want Max to do well this weekend, obviously. If you mm. know us, you know that we love home race wins. And this, obviously, is Max Verstappen's home race. So... I can excuse Max Verstappen winning one race of the season and that one race of the season is the Dutch Grand Prix. So I do hope that he comes out and he's extremely strong. But out of those two teams of Mercedes and Ferrari, I feel like Mercedes will be stronger. I feel like mm. Mercedes upgrades just... I like. I don't know. I just trust this guy. I trust the truck side engineer. And he isn't saying that it works. So I believe him. I don't know if I trust Ferrari enough to be like, yeah, I'm going to like bet like five bucks on you to like do well because like that's five bucks pretty much to me just wasted but I don't know like I think I think Ferrari have like gone through this period of like having such bad luck that it's like it's mm-hmm. laughable it is like actually laughable because you start the season having your three drivers being the o- your two drivers sorry being the only two drivers to be on the podium pretty much for the first th- four races of the season up to Miami and then it just kind of like disappear after that you know you win mm. monaco you win australia you win monaco and then canada you're like you fall off have the the most, canada canada you like have the most horrific race strategy where you make him where you make charlotte club be on inters in the dry and slicks in the wet um and like just dnf the good like like just retire the car because it was really embarrassing for you and then you just like have shockers of weekends and i just don't know if i can trust ferrari i feel like they've just like hurt my trust but who do you think will be stronger out of those two i hope ferrari i assume it's gonna be merc 
Um, how long since Max Verstappen hasn't won at home? So he must have won the last two years? Yeah, so he's won 2021, 2022, 2023. So okay. pretty much the last three years. So the first time he'd ever won. like, And that's like a, a really fun fact is that the first – that um da- like the Netherlands were the 12th country, I'm pretty sure, to have a Formula One driver win at home for them. And obviously it was Aww. Max Verstappen in 2021. So that's quite cute. I think, yeah – we love we love a good home race win. Um, I'm also was I was doing my race week kind of guides for this week, and mm-hmm. it made me realize that this time last year Alpine was still really strong, and Pierre Gasly managed to get P three, and I was like, yes, I looked at it. on the podium. Oh my god! I know it was, and I looked at it, and I was like, it was I was like Mon- scrolling. No, Monaco. He was on the podium. Monaco was Esti- uh, Monaco was Esteban, 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 and then yeah, was Pierre was Zen- in Zanbor. But and I where are they now? Like, and they're like sitting, like you know what? They're not doing horrifically. Build an our tractor manufacturer. <laughs> yeah, um, I just looked at it and I was like, "This can't be right." Like I thought I was looking at the qualifying one, mm. and I was like, "Did we have a sprint race at Zandvoort?" And to me, once again, I say Zandvoort was such a blur for me last year because the only thing I can remember successfully from Zandvoort was the fact that Clem won a race, and I don't think much else happened in my mind because the only thing that happened was Clem on a race and that was it like I tuned up for the rest of the race weekend because I was content with life um so I don't even think I remember Pierre Gasly getting that podium but um I hope that Alpine can pull something out of the woodworks I really want someone I I have like a strong feeling that someone is gonna pull something out of nowhere and we're gonna see like the most unexpected person on the podium podium just like, yeah, maybe maybe Kevin Magnussen finally gets his podium. Maybe Zan Vord is a race. I'm calling it right here, right now. If we sit here next this time next week and Kevin Magnussen has a podium to his name, it's my it, it's it's because it's of yours. me. Guys. It's, your it's, it's my it's my my it's my doing. Kevin Magnussen? Oh not Kevin Magnussen, Nico Hulkenberg. What am I saying? Nico Hulkenberg. Well, if Nico Hulkenberg has a podium this time next week. It's my doing. Nico mm-hmm. Hulkenberg, call me up. Um, nevertheless, Katie, what are your predicted podium? What is your predicted podium for the? Oh, actually, before I talk about your predicted podium, where do you think Sergio Perez will finish? Do you think that finally, you know, we've kind of had? Um, just let me get to it. Let me get to it. Sorry, I had this train of thought and I needed to put it out there. Um, obviously, we went to the summer break. He was kind of having that still whole talk with Christian Horner, Helmut Marco, even though he'd signed the contract that um, during the summer break they were going to have a meeting and they were going to talk about his future and discuss his future at Red Bull if he was going to be the team for any longer. And mean had that entire debacle with Max Verstappen being told that he was actually leaving the team. Um, but do you feel as though because his contract has 100% be set, been settled and Red Bull have come out and said that he will be staying with the team until the end of the season, do you think that this persuades him or rather pushes him to have a better performances or anything like that? Where And where do you think he'll finish? I feel like the security that he is going to stay till the end of the season possibly will relieve a little bit of the pressure. I don't think it will cause much. I reckon he'll qualify well, but race bad. Okay, that's a. Fair I reckon point. we might see one two in qualifying for them for some reason. Yeah, a Red Bull one two. Yeah, you know what? Yeah. Fair enough. I think I don't know. I don't even know what I think because I feel like McLaren are like McLaren and Mercedes are like so unpredictable at the moment. Where it's like. I don't even know if I can predict a Red Bull poll. Like, I predict a Red Bull win because, like, I'm not dumb enough to predict something else. But, like, I just don't know if I'm – I don't know. I just It's so hard. It's so hard to predict things. Like, before it used to be so easy because it's just been like, Max Verstappen win and Max Verstappen would win. And it's, like, ego boost. But now it's, like, I don't even know who will win. Like, what if, like – I really hope Oscar Piastri can win another race because uh, – King. Um, he needs to win another race where it's not, like, insanely – weird and like the race strategy is horrific for him but what is your predicted podium for the belgian Gr- not the why do i keep calling it the belgian grand prix sure. the dutch the dutch grand prix um <clears throat> winning at home would be max verstappen mm-hmm. on the top step yep lois george i, I do think that mercedes is gonna do well mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um i think my predicted podium has got to be i think what did i put i think max Lewis, Nico, Nico, okay. yeah, yeah, Max, Lewis, Nico. I'm putting Nico, Nico Hulkenberg up there, and I'm Nico saying Rosberg. Nico Hulkenberg. Nico I was about to say Nico Rosberg, and I was like, hold on, repeat, rewind, freeze. Nico Rosberg is not racing in Formula One anymore, Tiana. Um, and before we before we get onto everything, everyone's favorite segment of from the field to the track, it is also a F1 Academy race weekend this week, which is really exciting. F1 oh, Academy yeah. is in there. They are now in their sixth race, sixth. Sorry. 
they are they're in their fourth race of the season obviously they have one in singapore one in qatar and then a one more in abu dhabi which is obviously the end of their season so they kind of i'm pretty sure they follow f2 other than singapore they follow f2 for the rest of the season which is an amazing know. thing yeah it's really cool because f2 is going to qatar which i think is a really dumb decision considering everything that happened in qatar last year but nevertheless um we, we move, we soldier on, and then I'm going to Abu Dhabi, so I'll be there to see them all. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited, and um, I'm going to be sitting in on the F1 Academy press conference, so I'm excited for that because that just that's something that I've been really looking forward Very to, exciting. and I'm really excited to do that. But um, so make sure you guys watch F1 Academy because F1 Academy is so amazing, um, and I really hope. And we have, I think it's one no. It is like two points separating the leader and then second and third, I think Chloe and Dorian Pin are tied for second and third at the moment, which is insane. And I think there's like 12 points separating fifth to um, ninth, which is crazy. Um, so yeah, it's going to be an exciting few races. So make sure you tune into F1 Academy. But now it's time for everyone's favorite part of From the Field to the Track. Katie, it's time for the drive of your life. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Drive of Your Life. Tiana, do you do a little bit of driving? Sometimes. You do a little bit of driving, that's good news. Do you know who does a little bit more driving than the average person? F1 drivers. Do you know what time it is? Buckle your belts. It's time for Drive of Your Life. See, oh, buckle. <laughs> that was so loud. Oh, my God. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> Today's question is, which F1 driver past, no, present, which F1 driver present no, would you swap to IndyCar, but you can't say Logan Sargent? Oh, damn, that's evil. Okay. Um, Fernando Alonso. I feel like Fernando Alonso has got too many side quests. Like too He's only won the Indy 100, though. Yes, he did. He did. Indy of course. <laughs> the famous race, the Indy 100. Indy 100, yeah. Um, no, like I feel like he said that he would never do the Indy 500 again, but I feel like this man... Is like he's so close to he winning like, that triple crown. Like he said that, like no, he said it somewhere. I don't know because apparently it was too dangerous. He thought it was too dangerous. So I'm like, bro, you racing like F1 when there was no halos. Like, come on, like you, like you, you can't be talking about dangerous here. Um, but yeah, I think that I just, I think I've always said it. I really want to be alive to witness someone win a triple crown, and like a driver win a triple crown. So like winning Monaco, winning Le Mans, and then winning. Um, Indy 500. I feel like Fernando Alonso is the Fernando Alonso is the closest driver to do it. He literally only has to win the Indy 500, but he said he'd never do it. So if I put him in IndyCar, he has no choice but to compete in the Indy 500, and therefore will win the Indy 500. And I will see someone win a triple crown in my lifetime. So I rest my case. Katie, what's your? Who's your choice? I feel like I know who it is. <laughs> Daniel Ricciardo. Yeah. No, um, who would I pick? I made this question up like ten minutes ago. Um, yeah, maybe Daniel. Mm. Yeah, yeah, he, he loves America. He loves America. That he, man. Like, and then I could finally, like, we could finally get the dream, the dream team of um, Marcus Armstrong and Daniel Ricciardo on the grid together. Like, I just, <laughs> I cannot explain it, but in my mind, Daniel Ricciardo and Marcus Armstrong are besties and would be like the greatest teammate team dynamic ever. Or, like Daniel Ricciardo and Pato Award as well. Like, I feel like that would be a dynamic duo, or even David. Um, as you can tell. Daniel Ricciardo would be a good compatible match with pretty much anyone on that IndyCar grid. So, Daniel Ricciardo, if you're listening to this and you want to find a career for 2025, follow Logan Sargent and go to IndyCar. Um, My but that's all. texted me, you crack me up with, I love the intro. So, <laughs> he loves the podcast too, everybody. He loves the, he loves the podcast. It's his favorite part of the podcast too. The, the drive of your life or the in- your intros to the drive of your life and your quiz the intro yeah i don't think i don't think he's ever watched the podcast he just, that, i was just talking loud so you could hear it through the wall i think yeah. <laughs> well that's all we have time for on this episode of from the field to the track well, we are so glad that you joined us for this and en- for this episode and we hope that you enjoyed this weekend at zandvoort make sure you keep up to date with everything from the field to the track by liking and subscribing and following us on social media platforms we love you and we'll see you in the next one Bye. love you Thank you.